In this module, you will learn about the effects of the colonial rule on tribal life. Meet Mana, a tribal from the Baiga tribe. He now goes to school and life seems good. But it wasn't always this way. His grandfather told him the horrible tales of the British colonial rule on India and how it affected their lives. Let's see what Mana has to tell us. My forefathers were Joom or shifting cultivators and were very content till the British rule changed their life. The British wanted the tribals to settle in one place so that it would be easier for them to control us. They even introduced land settlements for the regular supply of revenue. Some of the tribals were allocated lands and were declared land owners, while many others were declared tenants. My grandfather and others didn't take this lightly. It was difficult to practice settled cultivation in the mountainous regions because of dry soil and water scarcity. Many Joom cultivators from Northeast India even rebelled against the British, who ultimately had to agree to their demands and allow them to practice shifting cultivation in some parts of the forests. My grandfather and other tribe members were hugely dependent on the forests. However, the British declared all forests as state property and classified certain forests as reserved. The tribals weren't allowed to move about, practice cultivation, hunt or even gather fruits in these forests. This forced many of the tribals to move to other places in search of livelihood and created a scarcity of laborers for the British. But the British found a solution to this problem too. My grandfather along with others was allocated small patches of land near the forest for cultivation and in return was asked to work for the British. The tribals eventually protested against these laws. The revolt of Songrim Sangma in Assam in 1906 and the forest Satyagraha in the central provinces in 1930 were two such major revolts against the British. This was Mana's story. Now, another aspect was trade. It also affected the lives of the tribals greatly as they were exploited by moneylenders and traders. By the 19th century, many traders and moneylenders started coming to the forests. The traders sold their products to the tribals at high prices and bought forest products from them at cheap rates. They also wanted the tribals to work for very low wages. The money lenders offered loans at high rates, making life miserable for the tribals. The 19th century also saw many tea plantations and mines coming up in different parts of India. Since the forests were now under the British, many tribals were forced to leave their homes and work in these plantations and coal mines. The tribals were recruited by contractors who made them work on miserably low wages. Besides, they were also stopped from returning to their homes. The British rule also affected tribal chiefs. Before the colonial rule, the chiefs enjoyed administrative and economic powers. However, all this changed drastically. They now had to follow the rules laid down by the British, pay tributes to the British officers and stop practicing their traditional functions. The tribals were exploited miserably by the British, the traders and the money lenders. However, with special laws available today, they are not exploited anymore.
you have now reached the end of the module on colonial rule and tribal life. In this module, you learnt that the British wanted jhum cultivators to take up settled cultivation. The British introduced forest laws and declared all forests as state property. The tribals were exploited by the traders and money lenders. Many tribals were forced to work in the plantations and coal mines as they no longer had access to the forests. Tribal chiefs lost many of their administrative powers under the British rule.